Rayma Wire, the online worship experience of the Rayma Church of Atlanta. You couldn't have chosen a better place to be for worship and the word. But before we get into service, let's hear our Rayma announcement. Rayma, we are only one week into our corporate fast and our lives are already being transformed. Remember our focuses, self-examination, renouncing idols, sanctification, daily prayer, and daily reading of the word. Our fast started with no sweets, but this week we are adding no breads. For more information about the fast, please contact Elder Victoria. It's a celebration. On Sunday, February 7th, we're celebrating Dr. Gabriel Allen Powell's birthday. We're asking all leaders and support staff to sell $75 and all members to sell $50. Let's be sure we go above and beyond to show Dr. Gabe double honor. The desire for marriage is God. But when it takes you away from God, it becomes idolatry. God is totally cool with you wanting to be married. After all, that is the first church in the earth. Here's the problem. Many of us are headed here. We're headed to marriage, and God knows that as soon as you walk down that aisle, he won't see you for a minute. That's what he means, see you. See me in church? Oh, me in church. No, 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 no. Not in church. He won't ever hear your voice again. You won't pray, you won't fast. In my mind, as soon as I get me a husband or a wife and I've been wanting it so much, I'm gonna be praying all, for the least first year all the time. But because the crave was not sanctified, you don't commit your husband or your wife to the Lord. You allow that union to take you away from God. Are you ready for B groups? Our B groups provide an opportunity for you to grow stronger in discipleship and the word of God. B groups will reconvene on Thursday, January 28th at 7.30 p.m. via Zoom. Feel free to contact your elder for additional details. Stay connected. Visit our website at www.drchurch.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at The R Church. And subscribe to our podcast by searching The R Church on the Apple Podcast app. Become a member of the fastest growing church in America by texting be member to 94000. We are a house that believes in sewing and giving, and we've made it so convenient just for you. Feel free to sow your seed through push pay, cash app, and sale. Are you ready for service? Great, because I am too. Thank you so much for tuning in to Rainbow Wire. Now let's get ready for service. Sing we worship, we 
solid foundation um, and it, it is is it okay if I just teach this this morning uh, by now we have a solid foundation about what I idols are and what they look like by now we realize that idols are not just statues monuments we understand that from a historical perspective the children of Israel and uh, those of those um, in the Old Testament would create um, physical monuments and statues. Uh, but from a westernized 21st century perspective, um, just because it's not necessarily a statue or an item, it does not mean it cannot be an idol in your life. What is an idol? Anything that draws you away from your relationship with Jesus Christ. Does that make sense? Uh, go to Genesis 16. Genesis 16. Uh, I, I want to um, I want to give you something to consider um, because what happens is what happens is you you say um, you say well no that's not an idol. That's not an idol. <laughs> you say, that's not an idol. And I'm going to show you how something, how you know that something is no longer or is not an idol in your life. We've talked about what idolatry is, but now we're going to, we're going to put it to the test. Genesis 16, and we'll start with verse 1. When you have it, say, I have it. Now, Sarah, Abram's wife, had borne him no children. 
and had a female Egyptian servant who was named, whose name was what? Hagar. And Sarah said to Abram, Behold now, the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Go into my servant. It may be that I shall obtain, obtain children by her. You may be seeing the presence of the Lord. Thank you. And Abram listened to the voice of Sarai. So after Abram had lived 10 years in the land of Canaan, Sarah, Abram's wife, took Hagar, the Egyptian, her servant, and gave her to Abram, her husband, as a wife. You are familiar with this passage of scripture, but I want us to look at it from a different perspective. So Sarai, who is Abram's wife, mind you, Sarah has, Sarai has not been named Sarah yet. Abram has not been named Abraham yet. Okay, watch this. So in this particular passage of scripture, we see Sarai not able to bear Abram children. Hear me very carefully. In this particular uh, uh, time frame, if you will, they were not trying to, the most important thing was not a house. The most important thing was not a car. The most important thing was not social media status. It wasn't likes. It was not fame or fortune. Hear me very carefully. It was a disgrace for a woman to be unable to provide her, her husband a child. Does this make sense? It was a disgrace. Remember, the scriptures are written in an Eastern context. Okay? Hear me. So, Sarah is so desperate for acceptance from her husband. Watch this. She says, I tell you what. This is how you know, this is, this is how you know this, is, this is real Eastern. She says, I tell you what. I'll give you my maidservant. You go into her. What does go into mean? It does not mean we're going to go together. It means that you're going to have sex with her so that she can conceive. Watch this. I'll take the child and make it my own. So she's, she has a fertility problem. Watch this. It's an idol because she's willing to go to extreme measures. She's willing to go to extreme measures to get, to make sure that Abram accepts her. Watch this. Hagar is able to have ch children. So, so hear this. Sarah has to look at someone else have what she deeply desires. Have you ever had a situation that you wanted something so bad? What says uh, you were unable to get it? It may have been because of credit. It may have been because of exposure. It may have been because of resources. It may have been because of uh, your lack of affluence and your lack of influence. It may have been uh, because you were not educated. Uh, it may have been because uh, you have not, you don't have the qualifications. Watch this. Uh, and your unsaved friend. Yeah, there it is. Uh, your unsaved. Listen, I can deal with it. So, most of the time, say most of the time. I can deal with it most of the time when it's another believer. You know, somebody that I call sis and bro that attend the same church. I understand sometimes that, that because we have prophetic environments and you say, yeah, she got that or he got that because the man or woman got pro prophesied and you, you so I can deal with that. But what baffles me is these Negroes and these Negrets, they have everything that we so long and desire. We've been working hard. We love God. We come to church. We 
we pay our tithes. All these people do is turn up, smoke up, dope up, and somehow, some way, they get here. Yeah. Watch this. Ain't nobody prophesied. Ain't they don't come to know? They ain't heard no preaching. But every time I get on the social media, I got to see my unsaved friend get the blessing. How the devil? She don't even look as good as me. He don't even look as good as me. How in the world did they get married before me? How is it that they graduated before me? Have you ever had to watch somebody else get a promise that you've been waiting for? Watch this. Here's what blows my mind. Have you ever had to watch someone that is, they are not as talented as you get an opportunity? No, not you. Maybe me. There are some people that I'm trying to figure out how in the devil, how is it that you went viral? I can sing better. I, I've been doing it longer. Uh, and yet and still, uh, it has not. I have, have 2,000 promises and prophecies uh, over my life and only two of them have come to pass uh, in the last 20. How is it? I'm still waiting. On God to come through. I'm a son. I'm a daughter. I'm faithful. And people who don't understand principles. Commitment. Have you ever had to watch a skeezer get blessed? No, you haven't? I have. So Sarah has to watch Hagar be able to do the thing that she wants to do, but she's unable to. And because it's an idol, she's willing to go through, go to extreme measures. Pastor, I don't, I don't understand. I'm willing Let's slow down here. Go to Genesis 17. Can we just work the text real quickly? This is what we call in theology topical preaching. You go from text to text to prove one point. Watch this. Genesis 17. Genesis 17. Start with verse 15. But look at that. Since they have it, go back to verse 1. Abraham was 99 years old. Let me pause there. I love exegetical preaching. That. Now understand something. And we'll see it later on in the text. Let me give you some context though. Abraham doesn't have yet a child from Sarah. But he does have a child from who? Hagar. Whose name is what? Ishmael. But remember, Sarah is the wife. Watch this. First. But don't miss this. Abraham is 99 years old. Let's pause here. We have, to, we have to understand this and we have to start teaching people. If you're going to disciple people and help people grow in the faith, it behooves you to tell them that God's timing is not your timing. Your timing is not God's. We cripple people by giving them prophetic words and not, watch this, hear me. The prophet will tell you the future and God gives us prophecy to edify, to encourage. Watch this, but your pastor, if you have one. It's dangerous to be a prophet or receive a prophet without a pastor. You need two Ps. Why? One is going to encourage you and the other one is going to process you. Oh, man. Pastor, I don't understand it. Watch this. The prophet comes and says, your name will be in lights. The pastor says, yes, not today.
Pastor, I don't like that. The prophet says they're going to get a bigger house, one that has 18,000 bedrooms, 52,000 bathrooms. Your pastor says, yes, but clean the one you have now up. Watch this. Watch this. Let me say something to you guys. I love talking about stuff like this. I have been receiving prophecies since I was about 19, 20. No, younger than that. Younger than that. Can I tell you something? Half of them, and sometimes I think none of them, have come to pass. While a lot of you all were in the sandbox, I was in church. There's always been a, listen, I lie, watch this. The first prophetic word I got when I was, it was when I was a child. The first person to prophesy over me, he's gone on to be with the Lord. He died because of COVID in 2020. Looked at my hands and prophesied to me. Hear me very carefully. I've been receiving prophecies for years, all my life. Don't miss this. And I'm still trying to trace where they are. Pastor, why you said that? Because you got a prophecy. The first one said five years ago when you joined here and because it hadn't happened in five years, now you're going back to a deadbeat girl, deadbeat guy, deadbeat lifestyle. You can't endure. Why? Because nobody told you that God's timing is not your timing. This new age, we are a microwave, microwave Christian culture that it has to be instant. Even God has to do it for me now. But Abraham was 99. What if I told you that the thing that you've been waiting on may not happen for another 20 years? Here it is. Here's the follow-up question. Will you still serve God for 20 years while waiting on a promise? Let me tell you what's going on in this culture. You can tell them I said it. These, watch this, rejects, cultural rejects, been rejected by the industry of entertainment, but what been rejected by the industry, the industry of design. Um, they come over to the church, don't know Jesus, don't love God, don't have pastors. They church hop uh, and they pray on the church uh, because the culture didn't want them. Uh, and here we go, uh, endorsing them and buying their clothes. Uh, no, sir, uh, in the kingdom of God, you have to wait uh, and pray uh, and be faithful and draw your designs and put it in a computer and store it there until God breathes. I don't care what prophet told you that it was happening now. Hear me. Men of God, we desire success. Women of God, you desire marriage. What if I told you your husband could come tomorrow, but the one that God wants to give you may come five years from now. I double dare you to wait until five years before you give it up. Daddy would say, put a lock on it. Clink, clink. I dare you. Can you do it? Uh, or will you take junk as a husband? Will you take junk as a wife? All because you want somebody to hold you. Look at your name and say, hold me. It's too hot anyway to be held. Georgia has stupid weather. It's cold today, hot tomorrow. Hear me very carefully. Songwriters, designers, etc. You got to be able to wait, design, and write. And have a booklet full of songs. A booklet full of ideas. And date them and be able to say 10 years from the time you started. I Watch this. This song, I wrote this 15 years ago. What many people don't understand about people like Ty Tribbett. Ty Tribbett's first album blew up. Hear me very carefully. Those songs were 15 and 10 and 11 years old. So who do you think you are that God has to answer your prayer right now?
Watch this. Genesis 17, 15. God says to Abraham, I will change the name of. God says, I will change the name of Sarah, your wife, to Sarah. I will bless her and give her a son, and you will be the father. She will be the mother of many many nations. Kings of nations will come from her. Oh, yeah, say kings are coming out of me. Watch this. Abraham bowed face down on the ground and laughed. He said to himself, can a man have a child when he is a hundred years old? Can Sarah give birth to a child when she is 90? Then Abraham said to God, please let Ishmael be the son you promised. Lord, please. Lord, now hear me. Hear the spirit of what I'm saying. Let me read the rest of it. God said, no. Sarah, your wife will have a son and you will name him Isaac. I will make my agreement with him to be an agreement that continues forever with all his descendants. Now watch, if you continue to read the passage of scripture, we don't have that type of time. There is a particular promise. God did bless Ishmael because he is the son of Abraham, but he was not the promise of God. So you can have any woman, but God wants you to have a promise. You can have any man, but God wants you to have a promise. You can have any house. You can have any job. You can have any car. You can go anywhere, but God wants you to have a promise. Isn't it just like you and I to say, Lord, let this please be the one. Let this please be the house. Ladies, let this please be the man. Let this please be the job. I want the job. I want the job. Please want the job. Your desire may be a downgrade. Watch this. And the downgrade could be a person, place, or thing. We think that people can be downgraded, can be downgrades. Watch this. Uh, because we are afraid to say uh, that some people we are just better than. Yes, you are. Uh, you got to be able to understand. Uh, watch this. Uh, I'm not better than you uh, from an arrogant perspective. Uh, but I will say because there is a call on my life, uh, I can't come down to lowly bar. What you mean, pastor? If I am a man, a woman of God, prophet of God, uh, I can't be going to the club and the bar and who on Friday. Friday, uh, kissing and hugging. No, sir, I live in the palace, uh, so I need royalty around me. Now, ten of y'all didn't like that. Watch this. I love tattoos, but you better not have nothing on your face. Oh, wow. Somebody said, I want me a holy thug. No, you need to elevate your thinking. He'll beat anybody up, but he is at home on the couch playing matting while you at work. I don't need nobody to protect me. I got pepper spray in my pocket. I need somebody that's able to go to work. Somebody want me a safe thug. Look at your neighbor and say, sanctify your expectations. Watch this. Don't miss this. Watch this. Genesis 21. Go there real quickly. So we see here, Genesis 17, that God now has, I'm going somewhere. God has now made Abraham and Sarah a promise. So we go from, I cannot have children, to, now God has promised me a child. What I want, God says no. While at the same time, I'm too old I've been waiting too long. 
I don't even believe. Watch, it's been waiting so long. I don't even believe it's possible. The Lord came back to visit Sarah as he said he would. And he kept his promise to her. At exactly the time God said it would happen, Sarah became pregnant and gave birth to a son for Abraham in his old age. So it finally happened. Let's keep going. Abraham named his son what? Isaac. Abraham did what God commanded and circumcised Isaac when he was eight days old. Abraham was 100 years old when his son Isaac was born. Sarah said, God has made me happy. And everyone who hears about this will be happy with me. No one thought that I, Sarah, would be able to have Abraham's child. But I, gave, but I, but I have given Abraham a son, even though he is old. So say this, God gives what he promises. Jump down to verse 8. Isaac continued to grow, and soon he was old enough to begin eating solid food. So Abraham gave a big party. Sarah saw Hagar's son playing. Who was, a who was Hagar? Hagar was the Egyptian slave woman who gave birth to Abraham's what? First son. Sarah said to Abraham, get rid of that slave woman and her son. Send them away. When we die, our son Isaac will get everything we have. I don't want that slave woman's son sharing these things with my son Isaac. Watch this. Let's slow down here. Idolatry, hear me, write this down. Idolatry can reveal your true character or can take you out of character. Idolatry can reveal your true character. Oh, y'all looking at me with a real tight mask on. It can reveal your true character or it can take you out of character. Pastor, I don't understand it. Watch this. Uh, since you have received what you were waiting on or um, if you received, watch this, uh, or if you received it right now, watch this, would you be selfish? Would you become prideful? Would you become arrogant? Would you become a hustler? Y'all missed it. Since you received what you were waiting on, or if you received it right now, would you become selfish? Would you become prideful? Would you become arrogant? Would you become a hustler? Wait, before we get back into the message, we want to be sure you know all the ways to stay connected with us. Stay connected by joining our ministry. Text V member to 94000. Stay connected by following us on social media. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at The Art Church. And stay connected through sewing. Sew into the Word of God and into our ministry. You can sew through PushPay by texting The Art Church to 77977 or through Cash App at dollar sign Pastor Gay and dollar sign The Art Church. Join, connect, sew. It's just that simple. Now, let's get back into the Word. Has it taken you out of connection with people? Let me slow down here. I got three minutes. Let me work it. Since you got the promise, or if you got it right now, would you become selfish? Would you become prideful, or would selfishness and pride be exposed? Would you become arrogant because now you have that thing you've been waiting on? <laughs> oh, I got so many good examples, I can't, I can't say that. Oh, I ain't going to say it. You be the judge. Shameless plug. the house would you now I cannot have I, I don't want everyone to know where I live oh, 
No, I don't, I don't, I, 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 uh, um, you know, I, I, now I have, I have a big house, but I'm not going to volunteer my house for the men's ministry or the women's ministry because I don't want all those people in my house. I don't want people riding by. Well, people ride by if they're in the neighborhood. So now you become, you become watch this, you, now you become so private. Now you, you are of importance. Ain't nobody stun you? I've heard people say that, and I'm sitting there saying, who cares about where you live? You can tell people what city and your address. Why? Because you can make your house available to your ministry, as I do. No, no, no. Here's one. You get a new house and you have people take off their shoes at the door. But you don't take off your shoes. If you went viral today, would you post your church? Because when you go viral, now you have to pay. Now you have to post. Now you get all concerned with content and the strategy. And I can't post my church. Or you won't post it on the post. You will post it on the story. Because you know it'll, fail. it'll disappear after a few hours. Yeah, that's why you ain't viral yet. Because God wouldn't be able to trust you to, watch this, be influential for his glory. Oh, no, I have to post the brand. Hear me. Here it is. Here, I'm about to drop something on you. Now that my business is up and running and I'm pretty influential, now you, now you, hear me, you charge your pastor. Now, let me just help everybody. I can pay for whatever I want to pay for. I don't need nothing for free. As a matter of fact, free means cheap. I ain't cheap. Here's my principle. How are you charging the person that prophesied you into that? And you got to know how I roll. I'm going to sow anyway. But, 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 you, you know, well, I said, here it is, here it is, man of God. The, the church, uh, they'll use you. What do you think happens in the world? You're acting as if they have integrity and the church doesn't. Oh, I'm working real good now. I'm saying, hear the principle of it. Your pastor has labored. Look at, uh, watch this, the rebellious people can't take this type of word. Labored over your soul. Prayed you in, through, and out. And you have the audacity to send your pastor an invoice. Has it taken you out of connection? Are you no longer sympathetic or empathetic? You get what God gave you or has been promising you or you or if you got it, would you become, would you lose your, watch this, would you lose your ability to connect with people and feel people? Watch this, because what oftentimes, oftentimes happens is when you become promoted, hear me very carefully, you have to have a consciousness. You have to be conscious of being able to still connect with people. Watch this, I don't have time now. 
that's beneath me. Here it is. Watch this, Ty. You hear about you hear about someone losing their job or not being able to get a job, or you watch this, you start thinking things like this. Well, I made it with hard work. Your ramen noodle eating self just five years ago. And now that you're able to feed yourself decent meals and you hear about people's stories, now, now you, 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 now you Mr. Mr. Fruit Man. Mr. Principal in Doctrine. Well, we, you know, we, 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 we're not, we're not going to be able to give anybody anything. We, you know, we have to work for that. You, 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 have you lost your ability to, to, to feel and empathize? Isn't it interesting that no one has a song about feeling no one has a Christian song about being empathetic to other believers. I haven't. Watch this. Do you, well, you no longer have time for what matters. You made it, now you don't have time to play with the children. You don't have time to spend time with your family. You're too busy. You're, you're unable to see that your son or your daughter is crying out for some attention. You think it's bad behavior, but it started when you got your promotion. Are you no longer sensitive to the needs of others? Are you only for who's for you? See, what I want to see is this. I want to see all of the people who hate President Trump. I want to see how you become when you become successful. Pastor, I don't understand. Well, I don't prefer the gentleman. I believe he's worse than racist. I think he's narcissistic. But here's what's interesting. No one has said he is a reflection of the church. What do you mean by that, Pastor? Because if the church was a reflection of Christ, it'll be packed with drunkards and drug addicts and prostitutes. But because it's not that, because you have to, hear me, you have to be a certain way to sit in the church. You got to do it like us. See it like me. Narcissistic. What is the difference? Watch this. I come from a culture. And if you leave a church, we say things like, if you leave this church, you may not be blessed. It's an indictment on this church. If you have to leave, leave. Watch this. We're going to pray for you, give you an offering, and bless you. What do you mean, Pastor? Because we become cliques and cults. We only service for, watch this, people who are for us. Narcissistic. As I understand, watch this. This is where this word haters come from. Now in the pulpit to get you on your feet, uh, we got to talk about your haters. Uh, and don't nobody even like you or know you uh, because, uh, watch this, you're not that important. Uh, but in order to get you shouting, we got to say your haters. Uh, nobody's hating on you because you've not done anything for people to hate on. So it's narcissism to always be talking about haters. Hear me very carefully. President Barack Obama became who he was because he went out and got people that did not agree with him. So he was able to touch in every area. 
But our current president, you have to agree, see it, do it like him. Narcissistic. Are you that? Yes, you are. That's why you don't have a mentor yet. Because you don't want anybody to tell you that your stuff stinks. You're narcissistic. Oh. Oh, God hasn't shown me a mentor. Narcissistic because you think that in this environment, no one qualifies to tell you about yourself. You're narcissistic. I'm still waiting on God to show me. Who do you think you are that you can be in an environment and there is nobody that's qualified to tell? Watch this because you think that a mentor is supposed to have more fruit than you. No, they're supposed to have more God and maturity than you. So, Pastor, what do you mean? I'm almost done. Sarah lost character, or we see that what was in her the whole while was revealed. Get my promise away from that boy. Just got married. Now you don't want nobody to talk to him. Now you don't want her to go nowhere. Won't invite nobody to your house. Won't go and get your new car. Won't go and pick nobody up for church. Just got brand new clothes and you won't get, watch this, you have the audacity to give all those clothes to the goodwill when you have members that need clothes. No, keep my, I don't want nobody wearing my stuff. I don't want nobody touching my, I don't want nobody coming over. I don't want, no, I don't, I don't have time to go and pick nobody up. I got to get to the church. I don't have it. Who's God talking to? Let's suggest that he's talking to the entire Rhema Church of Atlanta. Because where God is taking you. If I get an assignment at a Baptist church with only 15 people. And I say come with me. Versus if I get an assignment preaching at a mega church. Now this assignment is 30 minutes away. The mega church is... 30 minutes away on the plane. I bet you my bottom dollar, you will find the time in the way to go and watch me preach at the mega church. But because I got to go down there to a Baptist church, you don't have that type of time. I couldn't get off work. My supervisor held me over. All the excuses, and hear me, I've been doing this a long time. I've had people with me that could not make it when I went to small places, but always showed up. To play, sing, dance, whatever, when it was a big place. You want to know where I get my anointing from? Because when dad called, I was present. And the reason people are still behind me, trying to be like me, is because they don't have a history of when your daddy calls. I ain't talking about father natural. I'm talking about when your pastor calls you. But when it's a big engagement, you get to praying. We're going to go on a 21 day fast. But you don't fast for pastor's assignment. Hear me very carefully. I'm going to say something to you. Watch this. Can you cancel your stuff when I have my stuff? Watch this. This is where I get all the time. I get these dumb text messages and calls about, hey, should I take this? You be the judge. You shouldn't call and have to get in. You think, what? Because hear me. A real spiritual father will say, oh, go, go ahead. Because we're not controlling and manipulating. But a real son says, I already know the answer. Cancel. Because daddy, spiritual father, leader, pastor is talking, singing, dancing, praying, teaching. I don't have to call. I can't sweat all the matter. Look at you. You can't take it. Because you are important. You got your promise now and you don't have time to serve. That's the problem with entrepreneurship. The entrepreneur, hear me. 
We have, hear me, because in, in about 10 years, we're going to correct it. Hear me. We have been pushing everybody out to find their purpose and their assignment and their gifts. And we're going to look up. Watch this. And when these people finally come back, watch this after quarantine. Watch out the quarantine. Watch out the COVID is gone. We're going to open the doors of the church and we're going to see spirits and demons all on people. They're going to have money in their pocket. HIV positive. Because you told them to get a business, but you didn't tell them that Jesus at 12 says, I've been about my father's business. Watch this. Now we got people since COVID. Now you're having dreams of demons. Hearing voices. You know why? Because we've been watching church on TV. You've just been watching it while cooking. Watching it while cleaning. But you haven't been sitting there. Watch this. And that it turns off, you don't take 30 minutes to lay on your face and say, now God, make me this word. But you got your promise, though. You got a house during COVID. You got a car during COVID. But you ain't prayed during COVID. You ain't read no word during COVID. And if you did read a word, you read a verse. But did you read a chapter? Did you read it over and over again until you could quote it? Did you read it over and over again until you watched this? Uh, one night, Elder Torah, uh, I fell asleep speaking in tongues. And then when I got into my sleep, uh, I was doing ministry. Hey, uh, yes, sir. Uh, has God been able to wake you up uh, in the midnight hour uh, and arrest you uh, and say, spend time with me? Uh, or have you been busy uh, clicking on the computer uh, and trying to find jobs and uh, promote your stuff? Uh, where will you be when this thing is over? Idols have been shattered and our lives have been changed. Thanks to a message from our shepherd, Dr. Gabriel Allen Powell. Let's sow into the man of God for continuing to release a word that is breaking and destroying the idols of our lives. In 2021, our ministry has plans to continue spreading the gospel all around the world. Tide your tent and sow your seed to help our ministry continue to build the kingdom of God. Our convenient sowing options allow you to sow anytime, anywhere. So your seed through PushPay, Cash App, and Zelle. We'd love for you to become a member of the Raymond Church of Atlanta. Text the member to 94000. You're invited to join us on Facebook every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. for worship service and every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. for Bible study. And don't forget to bring a friend. Thank you so much for tuning in to Raymond Wired. We can't wait to see you next time.